What's up you guys, Slim X Team Symmetry here to bring you guys a new Slim Chat episode today and I decided to make this kind of video today because uh, tomorrow being Friday it is all going to be the release, the official release of Lord of Tachyon Galaxy and as you guys have known, if you guys kept up with me on Facebook, Twitter, all the places that I occupy now, um, that I've been talking, you know, making a lot of jokes and puns about this little card right here and just saying, you know, how ridiculous its price is. You know, if you guys looked on eBay like yesterday, I think at one point they were $200 a piece. Um, judgment days were like over a hundred is ridiculous. And I felt like making a video about, I guess, preparing for the unavoidable because that's one thing is that a lot of people want to say, you know, this shouldn't be happening. Uh, elemental dragon should not be coming out. You know, a lot of people say that and a lot of people agree with that statement. I, on the other hand, I partially agree, but at the same time, I disagree because Konami is going to do what Konami wants to do. They're going to release decks. They're going to release OP cards and it's your decision as the players to decide what you're going to do. Are you going to play the deck or are you going to try to play against the deck? Now, everyone is saying that the problem, like one of the biggest problems with Elemental Dragons coming out, uh, there are multiple things. The first thing is that the deck is OP. The deck has a bunch of ranks, uh, a bunch of level sevens. They're big. They can get out of any situation. I had said yesterday in my Good, Bad, and Yu-Gi-Oh that they could get bad hands. Apparently, they really can't outside of maybe just like no hand traps against a deck where hand traps aren't really that good. But the way the format's shaping, hand traps are going to be good regardless. Outside of that, they can play their hands. They can play... Um, pretty much any kind of hand and they can get level sevens out and they can bust out drago sack and they can just you know proceed to win from there that's one thing that's ridiculous when a deck is able to do that and get out of situations then you know the deck is really good but the same can be said for mermail um i was watching uh Jarrell's video his interview with simon and simon said that the reason why mermail is so good is that when a deck is able to get out of the most impossible situations with you know hands that aren't like ideal it's really the best deck of the format and i feel that that's what's going to happen with e-dragons is that they're going to be able to play around a lot of cards that people think are going to stop them and they're going to surprise you especially if they tech out the deck or if they um you know, just play around things that you just can't do. And I mean, if they go first and they go turn one, you know, Drago Sack LADD, I mean, you know, good luck. Like, that's really just how uh, things roll with that deck. Now, another thing that's a problem for this deck is its price. Now, the thing is, is that those E Dragons, those big fucking E Dragons, they're rares. That shouldn't be a problem. However, they are very short printed. And I can tell you guys from experience that it sucks when a rare is short printed because. It's just, I think, the whole idea of having to spend that much money on a rare, like $10 for a rare dragon, and I need 12 of them, that's $120, like, down the drain, just on rare dragons. And I don't mean, like, down the drain, but I mean, in all honesty, you know, $120 can get you, like, I mean, can get you something nice. I mean, it can't get you a Draco sack, but it can get you, like, the core of the deck. And I see that, that that's what I was thinking about, is that that's kind of crazy, is that you need that. And not only that, like... Um, other things that I'm thinking about because, you know, as I do this video, you know, I just, you know, a, random, a lot of random thoughts go through my head. It's not only that, it's the fact that you need that, but it's also the fact that outside of, you know, needing three of these, like you need three of them. And if they're 200 right now, and if someone's going to pay 200, I mean, please don't do that. That's 600, that's like $600 down the drain, but you're also forgetting you need this. So you need both of these guys. And you need them in twos or threes of each. People are saying you don't need three big eye. I agree, actually. I don't think you actually need three big eye. I think you can get away with two. Drago Sag, though, I'm pretty sure you need three. I could be wrong, but um, that's just what I've heard. You know, don't take my, you know, word on it, but that's what I've heard from people. If you look at that, you guys, big eye shot up to like 120 a piece. I mean, this stupid $15 card that no one gave a damn about when it came out and then people saw how good it was. Its price just kept creeping up. That's Yu-Gi-Oh. That's like Yu-Gi-Oh 101. That's how Yu-Gi-Oh works. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's just a screwed up system, but, you know, there's not a lot of things you guys can do about it. Um, when you look at it like that, that's like $1,200 just for the extra deck. And that's only six cards in the extra deck if you decide to run three of each. You're not including the other cards you need. Super Rejuvenation is like $5, if not more, a piece for a stupid common. The Seven Star Sword is like, I heard 30 I could be wrong, you know, don't quote me on these prices. But when you look at it, it's another really expensive deck. It's kind of like Teledad. People are saying this is the new Teledad. I don't know how to feel about that statement, honestly, because Teledad was something that, I mean, this is never going to be repeated again. It's, I mean, people could say this would be the closest thing to it, but, I mean, we'll see. Teledad was, without a doubt, the, one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! One of the most skillful de uh, formats of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because every, everyone who used it knew how to use it, and, you know, whoever played it better won the game. Now, I 
assuming elemental dragons are going to be the same unless you just out sack your opponent and i'm not trying to make a pun with drago sack but i mean if you get a drago sack before them you get an led before them you're probably going to win so i mean you know that's how that's how the game is played right now um other things about this deck is that a lot of people just they don't want to play against them. I've heard a lot of people, well, I'm not playing this format. I'm not playing until the list comes in September and they, you know, destroy these dragons. Now, one thing, if you guys have learned anything from this, is that Konami doesn't always touch new decks immediately. They sometimes just let them fly for another format. So if they choose not to hurt the deck, you're going to have to play regardless. Are you really going to take almost a whole year off of Yu-Gi-Oh! just because of a single deck? I think that's a really kind of stupid philosophy because all right if you go into a tournament and you're playing against all e-dragons and you're running i don't know if you're running i don't know you're running gadgets you're running something like that i like gadgets i like a lot of the new of the, a lot of the decks that are in the format right now e-dragons are just gonna be op but you know it doesn't mean that you can't top it doesn't mean that you can't do well sometimes you'll play players and they just won't get the ideal hand sometimes they'll misplay and you'll be able to capitalize on the misplay so that's another thing is that i would not quit playing because of a new deck coming out there are plenty of ways to, you know, play against this deck. If you need to, main deck Imperial Iron Wall. Like, honestly, like, I've seen that. That's a common trend in, like, the OCG. It's a common trend in a lot of places that they're starting to main deck cards that you wouldn't normally main deck. Goes and match, Imperial Iron Wall. Cards like that really hurt the deck. Now, it's not ideal to main those cards, but if you know you're going into a venue or an event where this deck is going to be played heavily, you need to be prepared. And if you're not playing the deck yourself, you need to be prepared to counter the deck. Maxi is a great card against the deck. Um... You know, there's a lot of ways to get around these cards if you know, like, what to side and whatnot. And I know there's a lot of channels that have siding against E-Dragons. I'll probably be doing a video of that myself. But I wanted to make the video today just to tell you guys that as impossible as it may seem, there's still reason to play. Prophecy is another deck. Spellbook of Judgment came out and, you know, it's going to make the deck, like, OP. It's going to make the deck just, like, plus a million, like, turn one. However, the deck is not unbeatable. Um, people think the deck's unbeatable. It's not unbeatable. Um, one thing is that the deck doesn't have, uh, outside of a lot of spells, a lot of really cool tricks it can do, it doesn't have a lot of, uh, other things. However, if you guys saw Frazier's, uh, deck profile from Alter Reality Games, that's a really good route to go with the deck. Going trap heavy is good. I, re I really found that interesting because I never built Prophecy. I never actually owned a Priestess or anything. Like, after I pulled one, I sold it and, like, I didn't realize it was, like, the it card. But... One thing is that I like prophecies now, like I like them a lot more than I did when they first came out, because now I see that they do have, the the power of priestess is kind of mind boggling. It's able, as Fraser said, basically to clear the field and just you know it's your game ender. It's the card that's gonna you know shut down your opponent, and that's another thing is that people have built prophecy. They've been holding on to prophecy for a long time. Now they just have to get judgment day to finish the deck. It's really interesting. I mean. I think that deck's going to be really good. We're going to see the two decks clashing with each other to, uh, you know, for the top spot. And that's basically how Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to go. And, you know, right behind them is Water and Evil Sworn. I would not count Water out at all. I think Water is still amazing. I have always actually been an advocate for Water, even though I haven't ran it myself. I just think it's a really good deck. I, being able to get out get out of situations the way it does is just ridiculous. Um, decks like Evil Sworn are also really good. Evil Sworn can give dragons a run for their money if they make a turn one Ophion and can actually protect it. I know that there are ways around it using Blaster and whatnot, but Ophion is still very powerful, so I think that deck is definitely a, a, a ringer for the top tables. And it's also good against Prophecy because it can't summon, um, can't summon Priestess. However, they can use their uh, Spellbook of Powers to try and get over Ophion, but you do run Dress, you do run a lot of damage step cards, so you are able to get around things like that. So I feel that there are more than one deck that's going to be able to pl be played in this format. If you think that this format is just going to be c solely controlled by E-Dragons, you may be partially right. I'm not going to say you're not, but I would say that you can also play other decks. Do not give up on a deck just because E-Dragons are out. Like, I want to play Fire Fist. I wanted Chicken and Wolfberg to come out. I I'm really mad about that. I've always liked Fire Fist. I'm still playing Fire Fist, and I feel that I wish, you know, that like something would have came out for it outside of cardinal i wish something else would have came out for it so i could play the deck i'm still gonna try and play the deck you know yolo fuck it you know like you know if i play against e-dragon i play against e-dragons you know etc i mean of course i'm trying to make e-dragons too i mean the whole world is trying to make e-dragons this is a known fact because if you want to have the best chance at nationals well e-dragons one of the best chances but another deck i like i like infernities i like the fact that infernities are back everyone remembers years ago how much i loved infernities i still love infernities i don't want to give up on decks like that and that's the thing is i don't want people to quit and just you know put all their favorite decks aside just because e-dragons are coming out prophecies are getting op you know th that's no excuse you can still play around it you may not win but you'll have a good time and i think that that's 
the thing is that you can still have fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh! at locals, you can still have fun playing at regionals. If you play something that's teched out and able to go against E-Dragons, you know, go for it. Don't give up because a new deck is coming out. I feel that if you do that, it's just a really bad mentality. And hopefully you guys understand the point of this message is that I won't be quitting because E-Dragons are coming out. I hope no one I know will be quitting because E-Dragons are coming out. Play the deck that you want to play and just do it. Just do it like Nike always says, just do it and just play to the best of your abilities. You may win, you may lose, but in the end, in the end you're still playing, so you're still, you know, winning at the end of the day because you didn't give up on something that you believe in. I feel that that's really important. So anyways, that's my whole little spiel on this. Tomorrow Tachyon Galaxy comes out. Prophecies are OP. E-Dragons come out. Everyone says the world's going to end in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh. We shall see. I just want to say that I think if you really think about it there is no reason to quit the game keep playing the game that you really enjoy keep playing our game this is our game you guys and a single deck is not going to solely decide who plays and who doesn't i feel that if that's how you look at the game then you probably shouldn't be playing there is a there is a reason why all these deck other decks got support evil storm got support other decks got support play the deck that you feel has the best chance to combat these two decks and you will be successful look for techs against the deck you will be successful you're not going to lose to every single E-Dragon player out there because not every single E-Dragon player out there is going to know exactly what they're doing right off the bat. It all takes time and practice. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, thumbs it up. Please comment below. I want to open up the comments to you guys. What are your thoughts on Dragons and Prophecy? Do you feel that there are tech cards you can use in the main deck or side deck to stop them? Do you feel that there are other decks that people aren't thinking about, like Gravekeepers and other decks like that, that can really hurt these decks? You know, just comment below and talk about your thoughts on the release of Lord Attack on Galaxy. Do you feel that it's going to be like the defining set of the format, or do you feel that there are ways to play around these decks if you don't join along with everyone else who's trying to build Prophecy and E-Dragon? So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thumbs it up, and thank you for watching.